Well, I had a really good effort at Jacksonville State this past week. I was, uh, you know, it was it was efficient, I think, on offense. But it was really good on defense. I thought our, defensively we really played well. Uh, when you look at uh, what we were able to do to a really good football team, especially against the run, that was the part that was, uh, you know, really overboard for us. I, I think our, our, our guys up front play extremely well. Our defensive line, our linebackers, uh, Jack at the star, Corio when he got in there. Uh, I just think they did a great job. Uh, stopping the run. I mean, that's that's a team that's a you know that's a if they were in the rankings, they'd be a top ten team. And uh, so for us to be able to do that to them on the road, you know, that's a, in a hostile environment. Uh, great crowd, great atmosphere, and uh, you know, I was just really happy with our guys. I thought offensively we were uh, at times hit and miss, uh, but we got you know we were able to start running the football, and I think we warmed down at the end of the game. I, you know. I, when you have a time of possession of over 41 minutes, uh, you're doing something right. And we weren't converting third downs. We were poor on third downs. That's an area we, you know, we got to obviously address. But uh, we were five of five on fourth downs. And that, you know, that continues, allows you to continue a drive. So I think when you, when you go back and look at that game, that uh, a lot of things that took place during the course of it, the best part was uh, we continued to play for all 60 minutes. And if you're going to play against us, you're going to have to play 60 minutes. And our guys did that. And I was, you know, extremely happy about that. There was a lot of passion in the locker room after the game, and that, that was a uh, direct correlation from what was taking place on the field. You saw us play like that. And, uh, you know, they brought it into the locker room, and it was an emotional game for us. And we got to continue that, you know, as we move forward. So we move forward. Uh, McNeese on the road this week. Uh, big game, huge game, obviously. It's a conference game, right? And uh, it's a place that uh, it's tough to play at. I mean, uh, I've been here five years, and uh, we four of the games have been decided by three points against them. So it's a heck of a rivalry between our two schools. Uh, they're going to play well. They're going to play hard. Uh, we got to match it or uh, exceed that uh, the intensity part. And I think it's going to be important for us to uh, have a great week of practice. I, that's, that's where it's going to come from, is how we do this week in practice. Uh, for them, offensively, their skill positions are really good. Uh, you know, the receivers, especially the slot and the running backs, excellent speed. Uh, they can do they, they really can do some things with the football in their hands. I think it's trying to find out who the quarterback is. Uh, they're still working through some stuff. I know there was an injury uh, this past week and then a week earlier. So that's been kind of going back and forth. So not sure who's going to be playing there. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, this is a team that's always attacked us and done a good job uh, stopping us in, at certain times uh, during the course of a game. And uh, it's not going to change. I think that linebackers are two of the most athletic guys uh, that we play against. Defensively, they're big up front, and their safeties fill. So, you know, I think it's going to you know uh, a heck of a game. I, I just know with the atmosphere, it's going to be uh, you know seven o'clock in Lake Charles in in that stadium. It's going to be a great atmosphere. That's it's something they're looking forward to playing us. Uh, uh, like I said, they always play us well. So uh, we're going to have to be on, we're going to have to be on our best. But it's a conference game, and I think our guys will rise to the occasion for that. So, uh, with that, I'll uh, take some questions. You saw these two high-powered offenses you played this season, kind of going back to UIW, and, and them, their fast-paced offenses. In both games, the time of possession was just really lopsided for your team. Was, how much of that was part of the game plan and the strategy going into this one, kind of trying to you know, recreate what you did against UIW earlier this year? Yeah, well, it, that's exactly what it was, Robbie. You know, we – uh, you know, we talk as a staff what we need to do to win the game, not what we need to do to score points or stop the other team from scoring points. We got to figure out how to win the game, and we felt like the best way to do that was to keep Jacksonville State off the field. Uh, their running game was just—it's—it's it, it's a their running game was one that they just keep running it and running it and running it until they finally break one. And you saw them break one the other night, right? We had some. We had a backer and a safety that misfit, and they were able to get one through and break it for 53 yards, which is what they do. And the more times they have an opportunity to do that, the more times that's going to happen. And that's what's happened to them all year long. We knew we had to stay on the field on offense. And even though we were, I think it was 5 of 18 on third downs, we were 5 for 5 on fourth downs, which puts you at 10 of 18 on in, in those possessions, right? And uh, so when you look at that, now you say, okay, well, how did you, how did you hold the uh, ball that long? You know, how many minutes on the clock? Well, that's what it was. It was those fourth down conversions that gave us an opportunity to stay on the field. 
Cephas Johnson, first game back, uh, played really well. Can you give us a breakdown on his play from the last game? Yeah, I thought he did a good job. You know, uh, missing a week before, you know, sat him out and uh, or two weeks before, that was a tough deal. And then he had the open date to kind of keep, you know, working on that. Uh, he's still a little banged up. And uh, so he'll bounce back again this week. We'll, you know, be really careful with him. But I thought he did a nice job. You know, he ran the football well, had uh, 90 yards, I, I guess, uh, uh, in rushing. But, uh, you know, he had some key throws that he made and, you know, did a good job directing the offense. How about Kristoff? He's been killing it as well, too. Yeah, he played really well. He's, he's probably our most productive guy right now uh, at, and on defense. Uh, he's getting everybody lined up. He's running around. He's playing really physical, and that's what we need to have. We need to have guys that, that attack the football, not just tackle it, but, uh, you know, physical when they attack it. And uh, he's probably our most physical player right now. He was, you know, and I didn't give him credit the other day on the fake punt. Uh, it was him and uh, Garrett Crawford uh, that, uh, you know, opened that hole up. They did a super job on the execution that allowed Bauer to go ahead and get through, but it was Herm and uh, Garrett that did that for that. So, there you go, Herm. I gave you this shout out for you, buddy. Can you tell us what was different from this game compared to Commerce? Uh, you know, no, you know, I mean, it's just it's a different opponent. Uh, you know, our guys, we didn't make as many mistakes in this game. The two big plays, two touchdowns that we gave up, we had a busted coverage. We had a safety that busted the coverage. And in the long run, we had a safety in the linebacker who were out of position. So uh, we missed it on both of them, you know. At Commerce, we had more of those. We had more things that took place during that time. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was, uh, you know, when you go back to that game and then you work forward, we had a lot of penalties in the Commerce game, not so much in this past game. And then we took care of the football again with zero turnovers. Coach, the way you've been calling games, some of the decision making, seems like you have confidence in kicking field goals that you never really had. Just talk about the way Kyle has played so far. Yeah, he's done such a good job. You know, he's uh, he's been perfect on extra points. Missed a field goal this week, but hit the other hit the other ones. Uh, and and the one that he missed was against the win, you know, 43 yarder against the win. A lot of pressure on a young guy, but he, uh, we felt good about it. So he, we, we're going to continue to do that. We, we he's he's having good weeks of practice, and that just you know carries that that over into where you have a lot of confidence in him to use him during the course of a game. And you know we'll continue to do that. Just adding on special teams. I mean, Austin five punts, 45 yard average, and pinned him down. You know, Rob, he had five, five, four of them inside the inside 20, the 20 and the fifth was on the 20. With that, Riley, and then just the, the fake punt, just talk about your unit, your special teams coach, and what they're doing each and every week. Yeah, Ross Jenkins. Most consistent group all year for your team. It has been. Ross Jenkins has done a good job. We feel like we got an advantage in special teams. Our guys really uh, take special teams to heart. They want, they want to be on it. Uh, and then we put them on a unit, they got to perform when they get on there. And uh, yeah, that's why you see the production that we're getting out of those units. And, you know, I think Ross does a heck of a job with schematically. Uh, we, we're, uh, we've, we've, you know, we've had some issues with the deep snappers and everything else, and other guys have stepped up. And But when you look at our specialists, our, when Austin Dunlap, Mateo had four touchbacks the other night on the kickoffs, so that eliminates that part of the game. Uh, and then you look at uh, what Riley's been doing, kicking and everything else. I mean, you know, when, when those things happen, there's a lot of confidence. But it comes from practice during the course of the week. When you watch those guys and they're able to do the things that they're doing during the course of the week, and then you turn on the film on uh, from Saturday night and you watch them run, there's a lot of passion on those teams. And I think that's a tribute to, you know, our guys and the staff coaching them. This is the best group of running backs you've had since you've been here, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Not even close. We're deep. Uh, uh, we're physical. I think they know what to do. You know, we got four guys that we can put back there at any time that we travel with. And, you know, a lot of times we only travel with one or two, especially the last season. You know, we were – at that uh, that position was just depleted because of injury and everything else. So, I think when you look at it right now, you got you got four guys you can put back in the backfield and you feel comfortable with them in running or passing situations. I think that a, a guy like, uh, you know, Rodeo is probably the one that had the furthest to come from a protection standpoint, but he's – we got a lot of confidence in him right now. So you in four years, you've been in the playoffs twice. You've lost in that second round to like historically great FCS teams on the road. That's a formally, I know they're making the move, but that's a formally historically really good FCS team. When you guys get back there this year, is that a game you can pull off of when you get in that, if you get in that situation again? Say, hey, we did this once, let's go do it again. Or is that just something that it's not really game to game related? Yes, yeah, I don't think it's related. I think you got to practice and prepare during the course of the week to play on Saturday. And uh, you can draw from experiences of playing on the road, you know, some of the things that take place and 
things like that. I mean, it's a beautiful day, afternoon, you know, so the sun, the fact, so you, you factor all those things in. But uh, as far as, you know, when you get to a place and where you go, what you can pull from and how it's going to impact the game, it really doesn't. It's the players on the field that's going to impact the game. We, You know, I can't look five, uh, six games down the road and tell you who's going to be on our team. I don't know who's, you know, injuries and everything else. We're just worried about McNeese right now and uh, getting ready for them this Saturday. Terrell Carter was your leading receiver in the game. I mean, he's a guy that seems to have stepped up when you've had some injuries in your, in your wide receiver group. He had a nice game. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, TC's, TC's a guy that we just – we got to keep finding ways to get him to football. You know, uh, he's got really good hands. His catch radius, he's long. Uh, and, you know, when, and when he does catch it, he, he has it. He can do stuff with it. I think he can be more explosive with the ball in his hands. But he's also our backup returner. You know, he's a guy that, you know, you really have good faith in him when it comes to catching the ball. So he, uh, he's not a guy that's going to drop passes. We're going to be able to get him the ball. And, you know, again, we're, we're expanding his role, and he's growing in that role, uh, knowing what to do and uh, where he needs to be. You talk about Brandon Barbie and that big pick at the end. I mean, he's kind of a guy somewhat overshadowed when you talk about Orlando and the other DBs you have that are just – kind of the preseason guys, but he's a solid guy too, and he comes up with a big play to almost steal the game for you all. Yeah, I, I, you know, Brandon's not overshadowed in our minds. We know how valuable he is. He's uh, I mean, he's out there every Saturday. He, he plays a lot of snaps for us. He's very productive for us. Doesn't make mistakes. He's very solid. He doesn't make mistakes back there. So he's not out of position, you know. And uh, the one the other day, he just anticipated the, a fallout route, picked it, laid out, picked it, and made his heck of a play. And, you know, Kunta Hester going over the top on a post route for the other interception, just a uh, you know, fantastic play when you look at that because they had play action, got the safeties down, and then took the shot over the top, which is, you know, their MO, but he ran that ball down and then picked it off. So, uh, you know, when you look at those two guys making those plays, man, it was just it, – it was great to see, uh, but it's also indicative of what they do during the course of the week. Talking about these guys a little bit, um, new staff, uh, you know, where do you see – I mean, they've been kind of almost been in every game they've played this year, um, outside of Rice maybe. But what do you see where, where what's kind of holding them up from from getting over the hump when you watch video that you guys got to be aware of this weekend? Yeah, you know, I think the the this is my fifth year here, and they've had four head coaches, yeah. so they haven't been any continuity, and that's a place where. I think over history, they prided themselves on having continuity and McNeese guys in there. And I think they got the right guy right now uh, in that spot. Uh, he's going to do a good job. But I think they're in, they're in a little disarray. So what we got to do, and what you said was them being close in all the games they have been. The first half, all those first half, every game in the first half has been close. And then in the second half, things begin to unravel a little bit. And it just goes with him developing a culture. It's going to come. And uh, those guys, and I just hope it doesn't come this weekend. You know, it's gonna, but it's going to come, and sooner or later he's going to get those guys playing where he's going to go all uh, 60 minutes, and, you know, somebody's going to catch out when it happens. They've been playing a few different quarterbacks. Do you expect to see a certain one this weekend? That... Uh, not sure. Nah, no. Nah. You know, you, you expect the starter to be in there. Yeah, I think he gives them the best opportunity to win. Uh, so you expect him, if he's healthy. Uh, we just don't know if he's healthy or not. You know, we'll find that out when we get there on Saturday. Y'all good? Thank you, guys.